I invite you to have a look at this picture. It's a picture with a traditional kitchen, gas oven, etc. And we have carrots in front and meat. And between the carrots and the meat is a cone. And the cone sits there pretty much unspectacular, but it integrates quite well into the scene. It's maybe a little bit too reflective, has lots of reflections on this side, but this um, metal here reflects even more, so it sort of fits in here. It looks slightly synthetic, synthetic, and if we would put more effort into it, it would integrate totally, so nobody would suspect that this is an alien object. The alien object has a shadow. You can see it down here just a little bit and here. Without the shadow, these objects, they all have shadows coming mainly from the two lights here, plus indirect lighting from the walls, which are white, lots of light and indirect light here. But without the shadow, without this thing here and the, these little dark areas, this object would really look alien, uh, be placed like fallen from the sky with another lighting and from another scene, so it wouldn't integrate at all. Uh, the magic process we're using here is basically camera tracking and shadow catching. So let's search for a nice background image. We can example go to Wikimedia Commons, which is commons.wikimedia.org. And uh, here we look for, say, kitchen table. And we find several kitchen tables. And let's pick this one, for example. Let's have a look at the description of this image. It was uh, photographed by Carl Schneider from London, UK. And it's obviously in a museum, Petworth House and Park. And far down, not in all pictures you find on Wikicommons, but in some you find metadata. And uh, here we find the camera model he used and the interesting number for us is um, this one. Uh, it's a 400D digital camera, which means it's not a full format camera. This means that the focal length is not exactly 17 millimeters, but uh, maybe 25, sort of, sort of. But it gives you an impression about the focal length. It's not a zoom, it's not a tele-zoom, it's a wide-angle lens. We need this for further explorations. So uh, you go uh, maybe here, you click here, uh, 3088 pixels wide, that's the full resolution of that image. And we want to place an object here, so we don't see this museum sign here, but instead uh, some kind of geometry. So let's save this image, Grafik speichern unter, which means uh, save the image under, and you save it in the source images folder of your Maya project. That's what I did already. Now in Maya, let's create an object which we want to place on that table. We can uh, make it very simple and easy, and I just create this object here. In order to place something in a real scene, you better uh, create a new camera. So spacebar, spacebar, we won't use the top window, we will use it for our new camera now, where we'll attach the background image to. Go to panels, and instead of perspective, you create a new perspective camera, which sits here, and we call it kitchen cam. So that's, that's our kitchen camera now. We're looking through the kitchen camera. It basically behaves the same as other cameras, um, but uh, it will serve a special purpose for us. And um, in the attribute editor of the camera, 
you find background film back is here and here's oh sorry it's called environment we uh, create an environment first of all we have to create it it's a, a, an image plane so to say uh, here you would change the background color etc but we create an image plane which will create that cross now in the scene and now we need to tell Maya which image plane we want um, and it's here the Petworth house kitchen table which we just downloaded from wiki commons let's open this file and now we see it here now um something very irritating for everybody who does this first time is the following when you navigate in the scene the background image plane stays the same but i'm navigating actually on the grid here but um this the whole picture doesn't move with it now when we plant this thing on the table like this it sort of sits here all right but how do we create a shadow and this is normally done by creating a plane which catches the shadow and does nothing else really so let's create a, a polygon plane and scale it up we want the plane to fit the size of the table so we stretch it and now when moving and rotating in the scene we can see that it does not work it works sort of but look at the back corner which fits now this almost fits but here uh, the our image plane goes far away from the table and that's a matter of the focal length really so let's go to the kitchen camera and in the attribute editor let's have a look at the focal length it's right length it's right here it's set to 35 let's set it to 25 and you can see this looks much better now let's scale it and move it a little bit to the back and that's already quite appropriate so you can play with the focal length a little bit if you want to and um, well we'll place the cone now on this object here is the cone and somewhere here we'll place it now uh, when we render this using Arnold the scene will look like this there's no light in the scene we have that plane here the cone is not visible because it's black as well uh, because there's just no light in the scene it looks a little bit uh, odd really so let's introduce a light now and instead of creating two light sources for two windows uh, we will just create one light which sort of covers the whole side of this room that's an easy task create lights area lights uh, the light sits here and it if you have a look at it it looks into that direction that's not what we want um, we want to turn it round and now you might find it hard to keep the situation of the camera because it currently fits the scene here you know we fit this uh, plane on that table when we move the camera only slightly uh, the the whole thing won't work anymore because we just fiddled around with the with the geometry here in order to find that place here but uh, we need to fix this now so we're in the kitchen camera we're looking through the kitchen camera and we go to view and we lock the camera now we can not move it anymore so we save here when we place the lamp so the lamp goes up here and we scale it up quite a bit and I think if it sits somewhere here it's all right maybe we can make it a little bit 
bigger and slightly tilt it down. When we render it now, we still don't see anything because the light is pretty dim. But now when we normalize, un unnormalize that map, we sort of see what's happening here. So we have a black surface and a black cone. And we have a shadow here. Now, how can we get rid of the plane, but use the shadow, which is only possible because the plane is there? Well, for that reason, Arnold provides us with a shadow catcher. Now, how do we do this? We create a new material. And let's create an Arnold surface material. And now instead of using the standard surface, we use the shadow mat. Now when we render it, we almost have what we wanted. The plane is gone, the shadow is here. Of course the resolution of the shadow is not brilliant, we can always fine tune this. And we see a black cone, which is not very sexy uh, as well. So let's move this a little bit to the side. And move the cone, because we want it to fit, to sit there where the, where the museum sign is. We scale it up. like this. It's really nice with the shadow and see the shadow ends here. It, if we extend this plane here more to this side the shadow would be longer. But we sort of adjusted it to the table size and uh, that's why the shadow ends here. By the way when you lift it up the shadow still stays intact. It's, it's here because it knows where the plane is, where the table top, which is the floor for our uh, cone is. Okay, so let's make this look a little bit more nice. I guess we need a new material now. And we go for an Arnold standard surface shader and we make it ceramic, which doesn't change anything here. But we can use a little diffuse light from the top now And now we have sort of a rendering of our cone in the scene. With a little shadow, with a reflection. Actually I don't like the color here. Let's give it another color like a, like a more brownish color. Yeah, now I like it better and the reflectiveness can be reduced too. Yeah, this is the kitchen camera we have and it doesn't move, we fixed it. In the perspective view, in the standard perspective view, it looks totally unorganized. This all doesn't fit together. And the next step would be a moving camera. So you need the camera tracking first and you build the geometry. And in this case, the whole thing would work. The camera looking around the whole table uh, would look around the cone. Pretty cool. And this is the starting point here. Enjoy.